Yeah. No. Oh. No. <laughs> Welcome to Bearcat Update. I'm your host, Jenny James. And I'm Alex Sanchez. We are kicking off the show today with a little Bearcat basketball. The women with a new coach trying to adapt to the new way of play and the nationally ranked men's team tearing up the court. This past Thursday, they were at home taking on the Pitt State Gorillas, and our reporter Dylan Johnson was there to get the highlights. Women's basketball battled Pitt State last week, starting off the game with a hot fadeaway jumper from Candy Eaton, followed by a dime bounce pass from Mallory McAndrews to Maria Dentlinger for an uncontested layup. Unfortunately, the Bearcats found themselves down the half, 18 to 36. The Gorillas began the third quarter with a quick three, but Jalen Haggard responded with a drive-by layup of her own. As the game progressed, the Bearcats were out-muscled and out-hustled, with the final results tallying 69-48 in favor of Pitt State. It was a little different story as they took on Missouri Southern on Saturday, with Jalen Haggard leading the Cats with 16 and Mallory McConkey not too far behind with 14. They managed to tie the game at 58. But with the last second shot from Chelsea Henry, the Cats fell to Missouri Southern 61-58. to The men, on the other hand, played a little differently. Let's take a look at the highlights from Thursday's game against Pitt State. Joey Wittes hits a three, shooting 8-4-13 from deep. The Gorillas played hard, converting fast breaks into easy layups. Your Bearcats stayed alive on the boards, out-rebounding their opponent 33-30. Trevor Hudgens also had himself a game, sharing the wealth to his teammates with 12 assists. At halftime, the Bearcats had a 57-34 lead over the Gorillas. Pitt State exchanged baskets, but it was no match for the 18 three-pointers from the Bearcats last week. By the end of the game, the lead was 28 points as the Bearcats capture win number 20 on the season. The Cats cannot be stopped as they hit triple digits, defeating the Gorillas 111 to 83. The men were hitting 55.6% from the floor, leading Joey Wittes to a career high of 36 points. Ryan Hawkins also grabbed a game high 11 rebounds, securing the second place spot in the conference with an average of nine and a half rebounds per game. The Cats wouldn't stop here. Saturday was a game of the top two MIAA teams, both nationally ranked. Northwest at the two spot and Missouri Southern sitting at 22nd. The crazy atmosphere of a packed Bearcat arena pushed the Cats, leading them to grab the 82-62 win. This secures the cat spot on top of the conference with a 21-0 record, 11-0 in conference. Like we said earlier, they are unstoppable. The Cats are continuing conference play this week as the men and women will be on the road, taking on Lindenwood on Thursday and Lincoln on Saturday. As the number two team in the nation continues to tear through the MIAA, we have to take a closer look at how the team continues to be successful. One of their key players, Ryan Welty, continues to make power moves leading the team to victory. Our reporter, Joe Andrews, gets the inside scoop from the last game. Joe? Northwest men's basketball entered the 2018-2019 season unrecognizable. Two years prior, the team was setting out for a national championship. Junior Ryan Welty is the last remaining athlete who recorded minutes in the game. I looked up to a lot of guys in 2016 or 2017, whatever year that was. This year, I, I'm just trying to be more vocal, be more of a leader, and just um, do, do stuff with me that. Welty has developed into a member of the team's starting five, quietly leaving an impact on the court. And last Thursday's 111 to 83 win over Pittsburgh State. He kept the Gorillas' leading scorer quiet. He, he guarded Franklin, and until the last 10 minutes, Franklin didn't have any points. That, that is, is the most impressive thing from him. Welty and the Bearcats are the last undefeated team in NCAA Division II. I knew we were going to be really good coming into this year, and obviously a lot of people didn't think we'd be where we are right now, losing the four guys. Coach Mack does a really good job recruiting guys that uh, are really good within his culture. Despite this, Welty says the team isn't going to stop developing. We're learning each and every day, and so we're doing a good job of just playing defense and getting stops, and that's, that's, what, uh, that's the biggest thing for us right now. Reporting for Bearcat Update, I'm Joe Andrews. Thanks, Joe. We are going to take a quick break, but stick around. we got a special guest up next. You're watching Bearcat Update on KWT Channel 8.
Welcome back to Bearcat Update. With the new coach determined to take our women's basketball team to new heights, the girls are looking to excel the program. Today on Bearcat Boulevard, we are joined by Zoe Hayward. Zoe, thank you so much for joining us Hi, today. thanks for having me. So kind of looking back at last year, now this year, had a new coaching staff. How has that transition been for the team this year? Getting new coaches is never an easy process because you're always worried about that, what's next. But Coach Meyer and Houston and Michaela have made things so easy for us, and they come in every day with so much energy, and they have so much confidence in us every day, and that just makes us ten times better. And what is one thing you guys are focusing as a team this um, year. Just to get better every day, that's something that Coach Meyer stresses is we're going to come in and we're going to get better. We're going to win some and we're going to lose some, but every day we're going to compete and we're going to be the best versions of ourselves that we can be. You had a home stretch this past week, now going to Lindenwood and Lincoln. Um, how do you guys prepare when you have a tough like road trip coming up? Um, we, for some reason, have been doing so much better on the road. <laughs> and I, It's just crazy how well we play on the road. Um, always just having that confidence, knowing that, you know, any night we can be as great as we want to be and going in there with that mentality like we are going to win this game and we are going to play our absolute best. And you guys are leading the conference in um, free throw percentage. What does that mean to you guys? Um, that's a big thing for us. We take about two to three breaks every practice for free throws and we'll shoot them for just 10 minutes straight. And you always hear Coach Houston in the background yelling, free throws win game, free throws win <laughs> games. And it truly does win games. I mean, there's times where we'll shoot a ton of free throws and there's games where we don't. And it, it's obviously a big difference teller, but we just focus on always making those easy shots that we get, you know. How is the, how would you say the team like environment is like improving or striving? It's, it's great. We're all super close with each other. And obviously something that, you know, Northwest stresses is having a good culture. And yeah. um, Coach Meyer just totally brings that together. He brings all of us together. And, we totally feed off their energy and they feed off of ours. So as a whole, we are, we are doing big things. And competing at this level, how do you balance out student life and basketball? Um, it's hard. As an athlete in college, you just have to make some of those sacrifices, like the social life you don't get as much as other student does. Uh, Coach Myers always like, you guys don't get to take three hour naps like everyone else <laughs> does, which is fine. But um, we just, we take pride in being with each other every day. And, I mean, it's something special. You don't, not everybody gets this opportunity and we just never take it for granted. Yeah. Zoe, thank you so much for joining us today. That is all the time we have for Bearcat Boulevard, but we are going to take a quick break. Stick around. We have more to come on Bearcat Update on KNWT Channel 8. Welcome back to Bearcat Update. With the NFL season coming to a close after Super Bowl 53, we look at the Bearcat who made his way to the pros. Matt Longacre, outside linebacker for the Rams, is one of many Division II players who joined the club of playing at the next level. Our BCU analyst John Walker takes a look at these special guys. We throw it down to John at the field. Good to see you again, John. Hope you're staying warm out there. Alex, Jenny, thanks guys. It's actually not too bad out here. Doesn't it feel good to be back? I mean, it's a whopping 50 degrees in Maryville, Missouri, and I practically feel like I should be in shorts and a t-shirt. But enough about me. Let's get back to talking about some athletics. Not Bearcat athletics, however. Let's talk about the biggest spectacle in possibly all of sports, the Super Bowl. More specifically, Super Bowl 53. There's a bunch of headlines riding on this one. Well, Brady retire? Will Bill Belichick become the oldest coach to ever win a Super Bowl? How about Sean McVay? Will he become the youngest coach to ever win a Super Bowl? A ton of things riding on this one, and obviously the star power on both sides of the ball. You have Todd Gurley, Tom Brady, Brandon Cooks, and then you look more specifically at the Rams defense. Really their defensive line. Defensive player of the year, Aaron Donald, Dante Fowler Jr., Ndamukong Sue, and then an impact player that not too many people think of when they first think of the LA Rams. Matt Longacre, former Northwest Missouri State University alum who was a part of the 2013 National Championship team. The former 2014 MIAA Defensive Player of the Year had his odds against him going into the NFL. And you're probably wondering, how did he have his odds stacked against him? Only 83 of the 1,700 players in the NFL are Division II athletes. Yes, that's only 4%. Matt Longacre is looking to become just the second Bearcat ever to tackle the feat of winning a Super Bowl. The other, Dave Tollefson, who played in 2007 and 2011 and won both of those Super Bowls for the New York Giants against who? None other than Tom Brady, who Longacre is looking forward to playing against in Super Bowl 53. It's always important for Longacre to remember one thing. 
no matter if you're in Boston playing for the Patriots, New York playing for the Giants, or if you're in Atlanta playing for a Super Bowl, LA playing for the Rams. Once a Bearcat, always a Bearcat. Alex, Jenny, it feels good to be back. Back to you guys. Thanks, John, and what a game it was on Sunday. Now, that's a close to the football season. Our Northwest baseball and softball teams are tipping off their season. The boys have headed down to Arkansas to start their seven-game journey in the warmer weather. The softball team isn't far behind as they pack up and prepare to head out of town for their own Arkansas tournament beginning this Saturday. Our reporter Nolan Brooks takes a look at what it takes to be a student athlete going on these nine-day trips. Nolan? A new season of Bearcat softball is upon us here at Northwest. After finishing 27 and 19 last year, they're looking to improve. So I caught up with head coach Ryan Anderson to see how they're improving. Well, you know, we we had a good year last year. Uh, the last really week of the regular season, we stumbled. Uh, we had a shot at compete for the conference championship. You know, that's what we want to do. We want to get back, be able to fight for that and uh, win it this year. Individual improvements is something this team takes very seriously, especially when it comes to senior outfielder Jadra Moses. I worked a lot over the summer on hitting. I'm usually a slapper, so um, I use my speed a lot to get on base. But over the summer, I've really worked on my strength and um, kind of just getting it out of the infield and using more power than speed, I guess. As the Bearcats progress towards the new season, the newest group of juniors and seniors are nowhere near inexperienced out on the diamond. You know, the good thing with our, uh, really is our juniors and seniors this year, they've had two and three years, years of experience. So, uh, you know, they're not new to the program, uh, not new to what we're doing. They've had great experience the past two years, and so uh, it's showing, you know, they're playing like seniors. A late game skid is what ultimately ended the Bearcats season last year. So this year, they look to improve upon that and close out the season before they even begin. Reporting for Bearcat Update, I'm Nolan Brooks. Now that's the end of our show, but first let's take a look at our top picks for this week. With the new field house and already hosting two indoor track meets, we will be hosting yet another one this weekend. The Cats should use this as another home field advantage to get PRs or even get a bid for nationals. Yeah, I agree. The women's basketball team takes on the road this week, and with a close loss to Lincoln earlier this season, I hope the women can pull off another W and Jet City on Saturday, especially after the close loss to Missouri Southern this past weekend. It should push the girls to another victory. Sweet, sweet victory. <laughs> That's a wrap from us here in the studio. Thanks for tuning in this week's episode of Bearcat Update. You can follow us on Twitter at BearcatUpdate underscore eight. Or watch all of our previous episodes on YouTube at KNWT8. Thanks for watching and have a great night. Hey, hey you. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Bearcat Update. <laughs> you can subscribe up here or watch all of our previous episodes down here. Check it out. Do it.